Hi everyone, my name is David Pike, the Connector Geek, and this is the latest in our series of Ask the Expert videos. Today we're going to be talking about high-speed signals. Now, the internet, the internet of things, is everywhere at the moment. Everybody seems to have a smartphone now, and so high-speed communications is something that we all seem to want. Uh, and in fact, away from the public eye, the internet and high-speed communications seems to be having a huge impact in areas such as industry and automotive, things that we don't necessarily see every day. And so we are constantly needing faster and faster communications. And as those communications get faster, we need the medium, the, the means of transmitting them safely uh, and with a minimum of loss. So today we're going to talk about high-speed communications and specifically how the transmission medium the, the substance or the, the airwaves through which the signals flow has a key role to play in signal integrity. I'm joined today by Kevin Liu from Amphenol. Hello, Kevin. Good to have you with us. Hello. Hello. My name is Kevin. Uh, I'm the SI engineer from Amphenol CMIO to support PCIe 5 and PCIe 6 connectors. I'm glad to be here. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's great to have you, Kevin. Thank you very much. And so let's start with the first question, which is about high speed. And what do you consider to be high speed? Um, yes, um, that's a good question. Um, I think we can start from the wavelength uh, when a connector is used for um, 10 gigabit per second data transferred, um, the length of the connector signal path would be close to a quarter of the signal wave uh, length itself. At this moment, um, uh, it's time for us to consider about the high-speed signal quality. And so what sort of frequencies do these speeds operate at? Um, um, Usually, a 10 gigabit per second data rate uh, would be operated at a frequency of 5 gigahertz. It also depends on uh, the modulation method. Uh, for example, um, in PCI 6, we use a new modulation method called PUM4. Um, it allows us to, uh, to use 16 gigahertz um, Nyquist uh, working frequency to support uh, four times of data rate, um, data transferred. Yeah, we have, uh, we can have 64 gigabit per second uh, um, on the 16 gigahertz uh, Nyquist frequency. Yeah. And so you've kind of answered this next question that I was going to ask, which is, which is how can we use such high frequencies for electronic signals? Uh, and you've talked a little bit about PAM4. Um, is, can you give us a little bit more information about what PAM4 does compared to, should we say, older traditional methods? Yes, David, um, we can start from uh, the traditional modulation method, uh, which is uh, NRZ, or it's a kind of on to, um, we can imagine a sine wave as an example. When we use the wave peak as data one and use the valley as data zero, then we can have two bits of data on a one hertz sine wave. Um, that's the uh, traditional, uh, yeah, that's the traditional modulation method. So when we uh, increase the uh, wave frequency from one hertz to, uh, to 16 gigahertz, we can have 32 gigabit per second data rate uh, in one second. And uh, if we use pump 4 modulation method, uh, we, can, uh, we can use the same 16 gigahertz working frequency uh, but we can double the data rate to 64 gigabit per second. 
that that is enabling designers to do it, to to use these medium to get more information through yes. to the customers. So it is it is a way of, of of sort of putting everything on overdrive and getting more information through these cables and through these connectors. Yes, correct. Oh, okay. And so when we're looking at these these high speed communications, what are the common applications that we are seeing for these high frequencies at the moment? Yes, um, I think um, several years ago, in the time of PCI 4, um, there are um, high speed applications like um, USB 3, Gen 1 and Gen 2, and also SAS 3, SAS 4, HDMI 2.0, DP 1.4. And, um, and now uh, there are some new applications beyond 30 gigahertz, uh, sorry, 30 gigabit per second, like uh, PCI 5, PCI 6, and uh, OIF uh, 112 gig POM 4. Um, for these new applications, we have um, we have different SI design concept. Uh, we have different connector structures, and uh, we will use different materials inside the connector and the PCB. And uh, for the future, we're also working on PCI Gen Seven. Um, these are the major applications we are working on right now. Okay. And so we, we've talked to you, you mentioned just now about the fact that that connectors for these higher speeds, you, you might use different materials within the connector design. So what are the factors that affect the ability of these signals to operate at these high speeds? Um, yes, that's a that's a good question. Um, the connectors and cable assemblies uh, for me, um, it's like a highway uh, connecting two cities. Um, if the highway is built for a speed limit of 200 kilometer, uh, it must be smooth and steady enough. Same as the connector design, a good connector in SI is strong with good insertion loss, uh, usually within one dB. And, um, with less return loss and less crosstalk, usually the crosstalk would be under minus uh, 30 dB to uh, 50 dB, which is uh, one on a thousand or one on a uh, hundred thousand of insertion loss. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a really low crosstalk. Uh, from the system point of view, uh, it would be a better signal to noise ratio and less bit error rate. Yeah. Okay. And so we've talked a little bit about the, the connectors and the cables uh, that they are this highway that you've mentioned about sending data between these and we need the low insertion loss and the low crosstalk. Um, but how do connectors and cable assemblies affect these high speed signals? And I suppose the, the other part of that question is, what would go wrong in the connector to make these signals deteriorate and not work very well? A good insertion loss means that from system A to system B, the data is transferred with, uh, with strong power. For example, 99% uh, power uh, is better than 95%, so that we can have more uh, data, correct data transferred uh, to the far end. From the system point of view, uh, they will monitor the uh, correct bit rate, or we call it as uh, the arrow bit, uh, bit rate. And so when we're looking at connector design and the design of the system, why are the traces on the PCB, the, the tracks on the PCB, why are they so problematic? to high-speed signals? Oh, yes. Um, from my opinion, when the data speed is getting higher and higher, um, we would like to have the insertion loss as good as possible, which means that 
uh, the shorter PCB trace is better. And um, it, it's also important to have good crosstalk and good uh, intra and interpair skew. Um, when we sometimes when we have eight to sixteen high speed pairs to route, um, it will be a challenge um, to to achieve all the requirements with a limited space. And, um, um, in some cases, that um, a, a connector and a cable would be uh, would be better to have a less insertion loss and ha have a better um, 3D flexibility. In some cases, we do use a cable assembly as an alternative plan of the PCB trace. It's a kind of, we call it um, just fly upon the PCB traces. Um, we just use the cable assembly uh, to fly uh, from the uh, from the PCB A to the other PCB B, um, we can save more insertion loss and have better crosstalk performance. That's really interesting, isn't it? Because uh, we've for many years we've used PCBs as the the main medium for our electronics. Almost all of our devices use a printed circuit board somewhere, um, but the fact is that these high speed signals cannot use a PCB as well as we, we would want them. And so there is this emergence of high speed cables uh, as an alternative to PCBs. Um, and I suppose yes. that then takes me on to my next question, which is yeah. how is Amphenol solving these high speed SI challenges? Well, okay. Um, first, um, I think the most important thing is that um, our team has very close cooperation, I have to say. Um, we have experts from SI, mechanical and manufacturing functions. Uh, we work together uh, to dive into every details. Um, I would like to use MCL connector as an example. Um, for the connector design, all of our uh, discussion is focusing on a very small range, which is uh, under 0 0.03 millimeter. It's really a small world. Yes. Um, when we dive into every details, uh, we can uh, we can take good care of uh, the electronic uh, field so that we can achieve a good uh, SI performance. And um, I think in Enfino, we have a lot of researches and databases um, for the uh, for the electrical field and uh, materials, including uh, the terminal materials and plastic materials. Um, the database supports us to um, to challenge the limit of the high speed connector. Uh, to make it smaller and faster. So that's really interesting, uh, and I, a really interesting idea of how Amphenol approached this problem of, of how to solve these these issues with signal integrity. And so my, my final question is, what new technologies is Amphenol employing when it comes to signal integrity? Yes. Okay. Um, that's really a good question. For the next generation, uh, the data rate is ex uh, is expected to reach 128 to 200 gigabit per second. It's really, really fast. So um, we do have researches on new materials and we're designing uh, new connectors with uh, different mating structures with uh, less interface and medium changed. We're targeting good insertion loss and very low crosstalk at the high frequency range. For example, uh, from 30 to 60 gigahertz. That's what we are working on right now. And um, I would like to mention that at the same time, we're also 
building a connector with high speed function and power function combined together so that we can use one connector to replace two or more. It helps us to, to save more space on the system board. And um, we already got a positive response from many of our customers. That's brilliant. Thank you so much for that. Um, I think it's it's important for uh, viewers to, to understand that when it comes to high-speed connectors and creating an end-to-end -end system, that the system is as important or possibly more important than any other connector system we, we talk about. Uh, with a power connector, it's often a case of plugging a power connector in at one end with a cable of a sufficient size, plugging it in at the other end and everything works. When it comes to high speed signals, the entire system from the traces on the printed circuit board, through the connector, through the cable and out the other side, plays such an important role when it comes to preserving signal integrity. And as we've talked about, the applications for high speed signals are, are booming. Uh, the automotive world, the industrial world, our commercial world, at home, the domestic front with uh, handheld devices and smart home equipment, we all seem to want high-speed signals, more data, quicker results, um, and the signal integrity is going to be a key part of designing all of those systems. I'd like to thank Kevin for giving us all this information about how signals are propagated through the cables, through the PCBs, and some of the solutions to, to solving the problems of signal integrity in a, in a noisy environment. So Kevin, thank you so much for your time. It's been great to talk to you. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon.